Uh, hey guys, Rant Science is back with new videos, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If I don't get very many views on some of these newer videos, I'm probably not going to continue this. But if you guys enjoy and keep watching my stuff and leave suggestions, I'll happily make more and more content to come. This is the modern day city. Streaming full of people, cars, and technology. This is nothing short of a miracle that we've progressed as far as we have in such a short amount of time. All of this is the result of multiple technological innovations. But the thing about most technological innovations is that many of them come from the ashes of war and are produced in an effort to kill other human beings. This is Rant's Science. Today, we're going to look at nuclear weapons. But in August 1945, something remarkable would happen that would change the way people live their lives, how politics work, and how nations would wage war. The invention of the nuclear bomb. This would be called the Manhattan Project. The Manhattan Project was used in an effort to create the nuclear bomb by the US, the British, and the Canadians, several other countries, all together in a joint effort to create the nuclear bomb to end World War II. Three days after Little Boy was dropped on Hiroshima by the Nola Gay, Charles Sweeney was ordered to drop Fat Man on Kokura. He flew a boxcar over the city for nearly an hour with the bomb bay doors open, but it was cloudy. Sweeney couldn't get visual confirmation of the target and was forced to go to the secondary target, Nagasaki, where 75,000 people were killed instantly instead. Kokira was spared because of the clouds. While the bombs dropped in Japan would mark the end of World War II, they would also mark the beginning of a new kind of war and a new kind of fear. The fear of worldwide annihilation. For the first time in world history, people had the power to annihilate the entire world several times over. On January 1961, a US B-52 bomber carrying two megaton thermonuclear bombs over North Carolina tumbled from the sky and a loose lanyard in the cockpit snagged the bomb release switch. Each bomb contained a greater explosive yield than all munitions ever detonated by mankind combined. Only one single low voltage arming switch remained untouched during the crash. Had this 3.8 megaton bomb detonated and the wind conditions had been just right, the radioactive fallout would have reached Washington DC, Philadelphia, and even New York. And a bay would have been left where North Carolina once was. There is a bright flash, brighter than the sun, brighter than anything you've ever seen. If you are not ready and did not know what to do, it could hurt you in different ways. It could knock you down hard or throw you against a tree or a wall. It is such a big explosion it can smash in buildings and knock signboards over and break windows all over. In the early 1960s, the U.S.-Soviet relations were strained to a breaking point, culminating in what is known as the Cuban Missile Crisis. This was probably the closest the world has ever seen to nuclear annihilation. And while the impasse in and of itself came extremely close to disaster, something else happened that would again bring the world to almost becoming ashes. On May 23rd, 1967, all the early warning systems across the United States ceased to function. It was interpreted as an intentional jamming by the Soviets. So bomber planes 
were immediately scrambled to launch an attack. But as luck would have it, a branch of the US military had been working on observing the effects of solar activity on the Earth. And on that day in 1967, the sun had ejected a powerful solar storm that had struck the planet and knocked out military defenses and other equipment. We think that most of the time we will be warned before the bomb explodes. So there will be time for us to get into our homes, schools, or some other safe place. We can build a weapon that mimics the furnace of our sun and the winds of Neptune, but yet we can't predict the weather more than a few minutes ahead of time. And with declassified documents, we know now that the US military has had over a thousand close calls with nuclear weapons since the 1950s. Over a thousand times when cataclysmic devastation was narrowly avoided. When will the time come when one of these close calls triggers nuclear war? Only time can tell. And as always, thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a like, share, comment, subscribe. And if you want to be notified on when my next videos come out, please click that little bell button down there.